Okay, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as, as Professor uh, uh, mentioned, I joined NTU a year ago, and NTU is a highly ranked university in the world. And over the year, NTU has trained many talents for Singapore and the region. And many NTU alumni are making huge contribution to Singapore's economy and society. And I'm very pr proud to be part of the NTU community. And I hope that uh, we can meet uh, physically in the near future. Now, today I would like to share with you uh, my experience about wireless power. Uh, I will talk about uh, the, uh, uh, give you a very brief uh, introduction on the historical development of wireless power since uh, Tesla's time. And then I would update you with the pre present uh, status and then my view on the future trend of uh, wireless power. Now, uh, Nikola Tesla was the pioneer of wireless power. In 1898, he published uh, an article on how to use high frequency to uh, transfer energy. And he, in the same year, he actually displayed a remote control boat. Uh, so nowadays, when we talk about drone, remote control drone or remote control car, over a century ago, he has already developed this concept. And in the book uh, entitled, The Man Who Invented the 20th Century by Dr. Robert Lomax, uh, a list of uh, Tesla's invention were uh, described. Now, he invented the whole electricity generation infrastructure that we still enjoy today. Uh, and interestingly, the industrial machines that he invented are now being used in all Tesla cars, electric cars. Okay? Uh, and today I only mention one aspect of his many inventions, which is the tune resonance circuit applied for wireless power transfer. Now this is a, 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 a drawing uh, of Nikola Tesla uh, giving a, a lecture demonstrating how he can transfer energy from one planar coil to the other planar coil. And if you look at his historical record, he has tried different type of winding. Some are planar winding and some are concentrated winding. And in one of his early patterns, this is a diagram which describes the uh, hardware experiment. Basically, he's using a coil, which is an inductor, together with a capacitor to form a resonant circuit. And then he wirelessly transmit energy from the transmitter coil to the receiver coil to power a uh, incandescent lamp. Now the interesting part is that he, he actually, in his first pattern, he used magnetic resonance. This point is important because in year 2007, uh, the physics department of MIT published a paper in science using a similar idea, but then they claimed that that was a new idea. But for, for those of us who under, understand Tesla's original work, Tesla's first pattern on wireless power was based on magnetic resonance. So this is uh, the detail of his setup. So basically he used a what they call condenser. Condenser was the old term for the modern capacitance. So he's using an inductor together with a capacitor to form the resonance circuit. And so this is a primary winding and he has a secondary winding. And if you look at the drawing, uh, this is the primary winding with the condenser, which is a capacitor. And here the secondary winding with the other two capacitor. So he, he's, he was using a series to series resonant circuit for this uh, wireless power uh, transfer setup. So this in, uh, th in 1973, he actually did, did a demonstration of his uh, ex uh, wireless power experiment in Philadelphia, in the Franklin Institute. And this setup was still available now. So what he had here is two resonators. 
and then wirelessly he transfer power from one resonator to the other to turn on a light bulb. Now, for 70 years after his invention, there was a, a gap. Uh, wireless power was not used in seriously in any commercial product. There was a two major, there, there were two major reasons because in the original document of uh, Tesla's patents, it mentioned certain requirement, which we now use a modern term called high quality factor. Tesla emphasized that to make it work, to, to have wireless power transfer in an efficient manner, we need winding with very low resistance. And then we need to operate the system at high frequency. But one, cen one century ago, we did not have the technology to generate high, volt high frequency voltage source. Okay. So Tesla, in his experiment, he, he had to develop a special multi-pole machine to generate a high frequency AC supply. So, so the power source itself is very expensive. That's why for 70 years, no serious application uh, occurred. But in the 1960s, a group of biomedical scientists started to look at wireless power again, because at that time, trans, uh, transistor became available, but they had, the transistor at that time could only handle very low power application. Okay, so although there were some research in using wireless power for medical, uh, biomedical application, but again, there was no commercial application. Now this situation changed in the 1980s because we have two technology uh, available. One is the commercial commercialization of this wire. This wire is, is a type of winding structure that has very low AC resistance at high frequency. And in the 1980s, power MOSFET, power electronics became available. And with power electronics, with, with this power MOSFET, we can develop power inverters that can generate AC voltage at very high frequency, say up to a few hundreds of kilohertz. So with these two technology, uh, two research group revive the wireless power concept. The first research group is from the University of Auckland, led by Professor John Boyce. And he's the one sitting in the middle. Now, Professor Boyce has retired already. I think he, he, he is about uh, 15 or 20 years older than me, so he, he has already retired. But in 1994, <laughs> he used wireless power transfer uh, for mobile robots in the production line. And I was inspired by uh, the requirement of uh, a, uni a universal charging platform because in, in, in mid 1990s, we have all these mobile phones in the market and they have different chargers. Okay, so I tried to eliminate them. So in 1998, I started to work on uh, paying a wireless or cordless transformer, which we later call the wireless charging pad uh, for the portable mobile phones. And about 10 years later, a large group of company formed uh, international body called Wireless Power Consortium. And, and then they start to uh, draft international standard for wireless charging. Now it is all about resonance. Okay, so Tesla developed this tuned frequency concept, not only for wireless power, but also for the radio. Nowadays, we realize that Tesla invented the radio concept several years before Macroni, although Macroni got the Nobel Prize, but actually it was Tesla who invented this idea first. And in our early, in his early document, he also mentioned about the concept of mobile phones. Okay, so a century ago, the mobile phone concept was actually conceived by Nikola Tesla. Now, when I talk about magnetic resonance, in electrical circuit, we use an inductor to represent the magnetic field and a capacitor to represent 
the electric field. Okay, so when we use an inductor and a capacitor in various resonant arrangement, this is the magnetic resonance. So this is the key technology for efficient wireless power transfer. So again, if you, if you transfer or transform the diagram of Tesla's pattern into modern electrical circuit theory, he's using a serious and serious resonant tank for his wireless power transfer. So if you look at the original document by uh, Professor John Boyce, he's also using the LC resonant tank in his original work. And for my work published in 1998, I'm also using the, the magnetic resonant concept. So, so the original idea of magnetic resonance came from Tesla and not, not in uh, 2007 as claimed by the MIT physics group. Now, after a century of uh, uh, development, only in the last two decades, we have rapid uh, development in wireless power research because of the availability of power electronics and this wire technology. So let us look at what is the current status. When Professor John Boyce uh, started his wireless uh, power research, he was dealing with this problem. Now in this monorail, they have a mobile robot, but this robot, as you can see, carried a large roll of cable, which is very bulky and heavy, okay? So Professor John Boyce put the transmitter coil along the rail, and then he put the receiver coil in the mobile, uh, mobile robot. In that case, we do not need the cable for the mobile, mobile robot. And now to, in, in modern production line, you can see all this monorail, without carrying this large row of cable. Okay, so, so that was uh, the, the great contribution of Professor John Boyce. Now for me, I was inspired by uh, all these mobile phones in the 1990s. Maybe some of you may not have seen this type of mobile phone because you are, you are too young, okay? <laughs> in the 1960s, uh, 1990s, uh, I think Nokia was the largest uh, mobile phone manufacturer. So I, 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 I did talk to them and see whether they can have the same charger because uh, we, we generated many, many electronic waste because they, all the manufacturer of mobile phone refused to use the same charger. And, but of course, they, they, they didn't want to work together because at, at that time, every charger they, they sold, they make one US dollar profit. That's why they don't want to share the same uh, technology. So, so I take a step back and, and thought, if I can come up with a charging platform, then, then they have no choice but to use the same uh, charging protocol. So that, that motivated me to work on the planar uh, charging platform. And also, I was experimenting uh, the use of high frequency to get rid of the inductor, because when we study switch mode power supply, we know that as we increase the, the operating frequency, let's say from 50 hertz to 100 kilohertz, the size of the magnetic becomes smaller and smaller. So I ask a question, at what frequency will the core size become zero? So that prompted me to work on the coreless transformer. So I managed to replace the core base transformer with two printed windings on the, on the two sides of the printer circuit board. And by operating this, this system at hundreds to a few megahertz, we, we proved that we don't need the magnetic core. And the efficiency can go well be above 90% because there's no core loss in, in this structure. And very soon after we published this paper, Infineon, UPAC, and uh, uh, the, these two big company adopted this idea in the power IC. Okay, so they implemented the coreless transformer in the gate drive circuit to provide electrical isolation. And they used this to transfer both power and signal. And I was also invited by Philips Research in Aachen, Germany, 
they use my idea to power a lighting device. And at the same time, they started to support my research work in Hong Kong. So this is uh, one of the early charging pad that was delivered to Aachen in Germany for the evaluation by the scientists in the phys physics research laboratory. My idea is very simple. I designed magnetic coil, a planar magnetic coil that can generate magnetic flux vertically out of the charging surface. Now this vertical flux approach is important because if we put the mobile phone with a, with a receiver coil, the mobile phone can be placed in any orientation and then they can still receive maximum magnetic flux emitted, emitting from the, the charging platform. So this is good for slim product design like a mobile phone. So uh, very soon uh, we have a few prototypes that can demonstrate that we can charge several uh, devices simultaneously. So once we have the printer circuit board transformer, we, we will arrange them in, into different array structure. We also develop the electromagnetic shield to cover the bottom of the charging pad so that when the charging pad is placed on the magnetic table, the magnetic table will not become an induction heater. Okay, so, so this is a, a, an important issue. And also we design the uh, receiver module on the, uh, that can be embedded inside the mobile phone. And so by about 2007, we have the whole series of patent uh, technology patented. And this is one of the winding structure that has been adopted by the International Wireless Power Consortium in the Qi standard, which is the world's first wireless charging standard. Basically, we show that if we have a, a single layer of, of array, we can generate flux, but not in, in a uniform manner. So if I have a hexagonal spiral winding like this, which is represented by a hexagon here, the flux in the center is higher than the flux along the edges. Okay, so we notice that one single layer is not good enough to generate uniform flux. So we discover that if I have a second layer, this flux fluctuation will be reduced. And with three layers of coil, we can generate uniform flux over the entire charging surface. So that means if we, if we put different, uh, a, a few devices on the charging surface, they can receive the same flux in a uniform manner and then can be charged simultaneously. So this prototype, two, two prototypes based on this idea were sent to uh, Friedrich Research Center in Germany for evaluation. So this is one of the prototypes. And you can, as you can see, at that time, no. Wonderful. Ron is in mute. Uh, Prof. Prof. Hui, uh, please unmute. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, this idea provides a very useful function, which is now called free positioning, because if we can generate flux in a uniform manner, everywhere you put your mobile phone, it can be charged. Okay. So this is in the cheat document, this is called free positioning. Now, but then we have a problem. Besides Philip's research, the Peninsula, Peninsula Hotel Group also support my work because uh, they were about to open the new hotel in Tokyo. And then the director of the hotel group asked me if they put my charging pad on the bedside table their client will empty their pocket and put all the items on the table. What happened if there's a cigarette later, a passport and 
credit card. Will, will the charging pad cause damage or, or fire to the cigarette later? Okay, so that prompted me to work on another series of technology that can make this idea safe. So first we developed an ultra thin electromagnetic shield that can embed all the flux and close all the flux without leakage. And we have to deal with a, a long list of items like the uh, uh, cigarette lighter. We cannot cause fire. We cannot heat up metal. We cannot erase magnetic data in smart card and credit card. And we cannot heat up table. But we need to charge the mobile phone. Okay, So we developed, besides the free positioning uh, concept, we develop a local, localized charging concept. That means we actually detect the receiver coil and we only energize the transmitter coil directly underneath the receiver coil. That means we only transfer energy over the covered area without affecting other items placed on the same charging pad. Okay, so we also have low compatibility check to make sure that the load on the charging platform will be compatible and they have handshaking uh, communication protocol. We also monitor the battery condition. So when the battery is fully charged, the charging pad will go back to the sleep mode. Okay, so by 2011, Energizer man man manufactured the world's first wireless charging pad with free positioning and all this function. So after all this uh, technology that can make the whole system safe, the Wireless Power Consortium announced the chief standard in 2010. So in the document, uh, there's a photo of the multi-layer uh, uh, winding structure, and that is based on my, uh, my pattern. Now we have over uh, 430 companies. Initially, by 2018, there were over 600 companies, but some of these companies are now grouped together. They merged together. So we have now four, 430 companies uh, in this consortium. Now, the Wireless Power Consortium is now expanding their standard. Besides the Qi standard that was launched 10 years ago, they are now drafting new standard for medium power and for the kitchen electrical appliances. And meanwhile, the Society of Automobile Engineers also launched the standard, the wireless charging standard for electric vehicles. So let's see what, what they're doing. The wireless power consortium want to develop power, the medium power up to about 200 watts to cover laptop, power tools, garden tools, electric pipe, bike, uh, bikes, etc., and also for industrial robots. And they have another center called Key, Key for Kitchen. And it will target power up to about 2.2 kilowatts for electric water kettle and even rice cooker. Now, besides the Wireless Power Consortium, there was another group called uh, the Airfield Alliance. They try to develop a charging table that can radiate power over the entire office or room at uh, 6.78 megahertz. Uh, but at the moment, uh, the momentum of this uh, airfield alliance is still very limited because first you need to operate it at several megahertz. And also there, there's a concern about human exposure to electromagnetic field at such high frequency. And this is why uh, up to this point in time, the industrial standard, the de facto industrial standard is still the Qi standard launched by the Wireless Power Consortium. And only a few product is based on the Air Fuel Alliance uh, standard at, at this stage. Now, this is the membership growth of the Wireless Power Consortium. It started in 2008 and they launched the standard in two, uh, 2010. You can see there's a certain rise of the membership in 2017. This is the time that Apple gave up their effort in developing their own standard. 
eventually they realized that they have to use the Qi standard. So after Apple joined uh, the, the wireless power consortium to use the Qi standard, everybody, all, all the manufacturer follow the, the same standard. Now, besides the near field application, we are also working on the mid-range application. Mid-range application means that the transmission distance is in a similar order of the dimension of the transmitter coil. Now, MIT in 2007 published a, a paper in science uh, with this photo. Basically, they, they were repeating Tesla's original work without knowing uh, the detail. And in, in their experiment, they have a very low energy efficiency of only 15%. And there's a reason because later I published a paper explaining the reason why they have uh, uh, such low efficiency because they, they were using the maximum power theorem, which is wrong, which is not a, a, a suitable for wireless power transfer because if you use maximum power transfer theorem, half of the energy will be lost in the source. In, in, in the impedance of the source. So we, we show that it is better to use the maximum efficiency principle. So we demonstrated in another experiment that with a transmission distance of about 10 feet over two meter, we can transmit power with efficiency over 50%. So this was a live uh, demonstration that I did about 10 years ago. So we use a, a domino structure with resonator between the transmitter coil and the receiver coil. With this idea, we can transmit energy of a fairly large amount over a much longer distance and also with efficiency higher than 50%. So this is one example uh, that we demonstrated in 2011. And on the same table is my charging pad made by Energizer. Now we can use this domino idea in different form. For example, this is a strict domino, a curved domino. We can even split the power flow into two paths or converge two power flow into one path. So this is an example here. This is a transmitter coil. We can bend the power flow, the wireless power flow by 90 degree to power a lighting device here. And we can have a circular domino, or here we split the power flow into two parts. And this is another demonstration using LED load here. A few years ago, we showed that we can actually transmit power from one room through a concrete wall to another room to turn on lighting devices. And here shows an uh, animation of, of this idea. So we can actually transmit power in this uh, domino wireless power structure. Now, after uh, from mid range to from short range to mid range application, we are now looking to the future. This is one of my recent work. We, we can now demonstrate that we can actually have omnidirectional or three dimensional wireless charging. Okay, here we have a three orthogonal winding as a transmitter. And we put receiver on different side and you can see the, the LED are uh, all lit up. They are powered by a three-dimensional transmitter. And this is a computer animation to show that we can actually diverge the magnetic flux to all directions. So basically what we can do is we do a scanning in a three di dimension and register the power in each direction. And, and the amount of power after one scan tells us where the loads are, the location of the load. And then we can use uh, directional wireless charging to, to power these devices. And this is a, a, three, uh, a video showing how it works. So here we have a rotating table. We have receiver pointing in different direction. As the rotating table rotate, you can see uh, we all this receiver, the, the green receiver, can pick up power to turn on the lighting devices, the LED loads. Now we are also looking at different structure. This is a ball joint structure. 
Now we can use both inductive and capacitive wireless power transfer for this idea. So here, let me show you a video of uh, this ball drawn structure based on inductive magnetic resonance. And recently, we have a, magnetic, a, a capacitive wireless charging uh, structure for the same ball joint because the ball joint has a unique feature that the overlap area, which is the capacitance between the transmitter layer and the receiver layer will remain constant if you design them properly. So look at this as an example. As we rotate the, the ball joint, this cover area will be larger and this area will be smaller, but the overall area remain the same. Okay, so it, as long as you keep the overlap area constant, you have the same capacity, uh, ca capacitance between the transmitter layer and the receiver layer. Now, we are also studying the, the, the charging platform for drone and for mobile robots in, factories. We have now also a project for a charging platform on top of a high voltage tower because we, have, we now have the power infrastructure being merged with the information infrastructure. So on the high voltage tower, there, there's a need of a power supply that can provide power for a range of online monitoring systems. This type of monitoring system will be used to monitor the weather condition, as well as the condition of the transmission line. At the moment, they rely on solar panel, which is not reliable. And you can see we have more and more monitoring system on, on the high voltage tower. So what we propose is to harvest the energy around the current carrying cable. Here we, we can see there's a high voltage insulation rod holding the current carrying cable to the grounded transmission tower. So we have a project that we can actually embed the resonator coil inside the insulation disk. So by harvesting magnetic energy from the current carrying cable, we can use high frequency to transmit power wirelessly through the insulation rod and then have to have a receiver circuit to recover the energy and provide a, a weather independent power supply. So, so this is the infrastructure that we have in mind. So basically we embed the resonator coil inside the insulation disk and transmit the energy from the energy harvester to the, the, the high voltage tower. So this is a complete uh, structure uh, that we use in our experiment. So we harvest the energy, turn it into high frequency, transmit it over the resonator, and then receive the high frequency energy to provide a DC power supply. And here is an, an example that we can actually achieve efficiency higher than 60% over 1.1 meter in, in one of these uh, commercial products. And this is a, a, a lab prototype. Uh, we show that we can achieve over 60% for a wide load range. And let me show you a video of this demonstration. Here we are, we are trying to power this online monitoring uh, camera. So we can see the, the picture from this camera. So it receives about 20 watts. Now, my colleague at Imperial College is now working on 
the charging platform for drone. And let me show you this. So he's now powering a drone without that battery in this demonstration. And we are close to get it into a commercial product. So instead of using manual winding, we are, we are designing printed coil so that we can embed it inside the insulation disc. And so this is a, pro a prototype that uh, was set up in China by a power company who, uh, which support our, supported our work when I was in Hong Kong. So they put it into a high voltage uh, test lab and this printed coil survived 600 kilovolt. So this is a, a live demonstration. Uh, so here it's the current transformer. So this is a current carrying cable. We harvest the energy, turn it into high frequency, and then power this transmitter coil. And then through the embedded printed resonator, we transmit power over about two meter to the receiver coil to turn on the LED load. So to conclude, we can see that Tesla's magnetic resonance concept has made wireless power possible. And because of power electronics in the 1980s, we can now commercialize wireless power technology. And we have now the first Qi certified charger since 2011. And this market is expected to grow rapidly in the next few years. And we believe that wireless power will penetrate into consumer electronic market, medical applications, industrial application like mobile robots in the manufacturing and warehouse, electric vehicle, and smart grid. And with this, I thank you for your attention and I end my presentation here.